friends, I have another story in our my book. So for the prepare to read, this is narrative poetry, which tells a story using poetic structure. So a narrative poem includes story elements like characters and plot, like there's something that's, there's events that are happening in the story. The narrator or characters in this type of poetry reflect on a particular topic. So they're talking about a, a particular topic. Some narrative poems are written in free verse and they do not have a regular pattern or rhythm or rhyme. So just because it's poetry doesn't mean it has to rhyme. It can rhyme, but it doesn't have to. And so we've got some vocabulary words that will be highlighted in here, just like in the Flora and Ulysses story. The definition will be underneath them and you can see it. So this narrative poem that we are reading is called, Yes, We Are Latinos. So, and there are going to be some different characters that are telling about themselves. My name is Jose Miguel, not Joe, not Mike. I am Cuban and Nicaraguan. I live in Tampa, Florida. I am Latino. Here's a little map of where his family's from. Adios, Jose Miguel. Have a good day, hijo. Aprende mucho. Learn all you can. Just as he does every day, my grandfather comes to the door to say goodbye to me, giving me advice as I leave for school. He says he wishes he had been able to do that for his own son, my father. The sky is covered with dark clouds, so I rush. School is not far, but the rain could begin any minute. Here in Florida, the sky goes from blue to black in an instant, and you get soaked before you even realize it's raining. Roger catches up with me before the rain does. I would have rather gotten soaked. He slaps me on the back, pretending to be friendly, but making sure it hurts. Made many tacos today, Miguel, he asks. What are you using in them now, dog meat? He laughs and lets go of me because we are already at school and Mr. Tate is standing in the yard watching us. Ever since Miguel's tacos opened a couple of blocks away from school, the kids have been teasing me. Before it used to be all about no way, Jose, and now it's all about Miguel's tacos. It would be easier. Mr. Tate keeps saying to me, if you would just, if you would let us call you Joe or Mike, it would let you blend in. Yesterday I got tired of his words. Do you know who Cervantes is, Mr. Tate? I asked him politely. Don Miguel de Cervantes or Miguel de Unamuno or Miguel Hernandez. Look them up, Mr. Tate. I was very sure to keep my tone soft and my words polite. Google them. Then you would know why I can't be called Mike. I think I impressed him. I doubt he will come back with that Mike business again. Although the truth is, I wasn't named Miguel for Miguel de Unamuno or Miguel Hernandez or Cervantes. I was named after my grandfather. Jose Miguel Martinez, who never wrote a word, but every morning walks out to the door to say goodbye and tell me to learn much. That is why I will not be Joe or Mike, in spite of all the Rogers in the world, but Jose Miguel Martinez, Cubano a mucho honra. Yes, very proud to be Cuban. Para Cerveril, at your service. My name is Lily. I am Guatemalan. I am Chinese. I live in Los Angeles. I am Latina. My name is Michiko. I am Peruvian. I am Japanese. Asanse. I live in Los Angeles. I am Latina. I'm used to the expressions of surprise and wonder the first time people hear me speaking Spanish. They often make comments like, for you Chinese people, learning languages must be easy. Sometimes I get tired of explaining that while it's true I'm Chinese, it's also true I'm a Latina, a Latin American, a Guatemalan. It's nice when I don't have to explain. That's what happened when I first met Michiko, who is now my best friend. We were both new in school and we were placed in a Spanish bilingual class. She looked at me, I looked at her, and we both smiled. We both knew. I knew that she has had to explain many times that although she is the granddaughter of Japanese grandparents, Spanish is her first language. Just as I have had to explain that I am both Ch 
Chinese, and Latina. It was easy to become friends knowing that something, knowing something about each other already. We are both proud of our rich history. I am sorry I do not speak more Chinese and Michiko is sorry she only speaks a little Japanese, but we are beginning to learn our grandparents' language. If people continue to think of us as Chinese and Japanese, it, would, it will be fun to at least speak our heritage language. In our case, being best friends, we both decided to learn Chinese and Japanese. We already know that two languages are much better than one, so imagine knowing four. I'm Michiko and I agree with all Lily has said. I like the pride I feel being from Peru, a country with such extraordinary ancient cultures. And I feel the same pride knowing my grandparents' culture is equally ancient and rich. But above all, I love talking to people, listening to what they have to say, trying to understand how much people can have inside. That's why I will continue to study languages so that one day I can speak and listen around the world and always feel at home among friends.